<laughs> in this video, I just want to show you how you can extract data out of Proxmox backup VMA files. I have a virtual machine, 102 is the ID. In the mode stop, I have created this backup with compression gzip. As you can see, I have a vma.gz file, which has been created by Proxmox, and this file contains a full backup of this, of this virtual machine. I will show you how you can access the data on this VMA file to extract data you may have lost and need to recover again on a Windows computer. As you can see, I have a storage box here, which is an external storage by my provider I use to storage my backups. I have here an active connection to this backup server where this uh, backup numpy files are Stored. So here you can see these files are related to this backup you can see in this browser field here at Proxmox. And I have downloaded these three files here. One is a LOG file. This file just contains information about the backup process for this backup on Proxmox. And one is a node file. This file only contains information about the VM which has been backed up. Um, so the file we need is a vma.gz file. Your file maybe has a different name related to the compression you did use. And I will now unzip this vma.gz file with Winra. This will take a bit. Okay, we have now unzipped our vma file right here. And you can see I have a vma file. I will now call this file x.vma just to get it better in shell uh, operations and put it on my desktop. Now we need to convert this VMA image to a raw disk image to use it on different Windows software to mount it. So I have a software for it. It's a Docker container you can use. You just need Docker desktop installed on your Windows computer. And then you can download my repository. You can find the link in the description and uh, click on the create.bat file. You can now see a Docker container has been created and you can, all, uh, you, can all, uh, you can also find a folder files here in the repository. Put your x.vma file inside that files folder. Go to your Docker desktop instance. Click on the new deployed VMA to raw image. Uh, navigate to exec to view the shell. Switch to bash mode. And now navigate to the folder which represents the file folder here in the repository. It's slash opt slash files. As you can see, we have the x.vma file here. Type in the comment vma extract path to the file, which is here x.vma path to output folder. As you can now see, the Docker container has started to now convert the file, uh, the vma file to a raw disk image. Um, and yeah, this can take a bit depending on how large the output file will be. At the moment you can see the VMA file is just 2.4 GB big in size, but depending on the partitions saved inside that disk image, the output file will be much larger. As you can see now, the process has been completed and uh, in the X folder I now have two different files. The converted disk image, which is now 108 gig in size, and a chemoserver.conf file. The chemoserver.conf file, this just contains some information about the um, disk type uh, out of which the backup has been created. So this file is not really necessary for getting our data back. Um, so this is the important file we need. I will just put it on my desktop right here. and. There's different software for Windows to mount that file and to um, to access the data on your Windows computer. I will show you Disk Internals Linux Reader. Here, you will you will get um, a new application inside your um, inside your applications which you can which you can execute, which is Disk Internals Linux Reader. If you start that application, you will see this window. And then you can just choose drives, mount image, raw disk image, and then choose the related file on your desktop. And as you can see, the different partitions out of the file 
are now displayed here. Um, I can now access the different file systems as you can see here we have a Linux file system and here I can save the data on my computer and so I can recover data out of that backup.